We've seen the equation set up for the spruce budworm example. The equation, oh, I didn't mean to move that. The equation is here, um, and it has um, four parameters, these population parameters and these predation parameters, A, B, R, and K. You can look in the book to see the non-dimensionalization steps, but the system non-dimensionalizes, and that allows us to get rid of two of the four parameters through non-dimensionalization. So we've chosen to keep the population parameters, the R and the K, and A and B have been eliminated through the non-dimensionalization process. Now, taking a look at these equations, you might notice that X factors out of both of them. So if we start thinking about fixed points of this equation, just to think about what the expected states of the system would be, we can see that X equals zero is going to be a fixed point. So I've factored it out right down here. And X equals zero is a fixed point that corresponds to zero population. That's not something we're so interested in. We're interested in the positive population fixed points. And so to think about those, I actually want zeros of this other function, this function that was left behind when I factored out the x. And to think about zeros of this function, I'm actually just going to plot the first part of it versus the second part. So when I set it to equal to 0, when this thing expression is equal to this expression, I would get fixed points. And so I'm going to plot and look for intersections to see when those zeros are. And I'm going to plot using the manipulate command. So this is that curve associated with predation. Uh, yes, this is that curve associated with predation. And now I'm changing the two parameters associated with the growth rate. And you can see right now that at this parameter set, I have a low population. And let's think about its stability. To think about its stability, if this quantity is larger than that quantity, so if my blue curve is above my orange curve, my flow is in the positive direction. So flow is in the positive direction, this fixed point is actually a stable fixed point. And as I manipulate these parameters, you can see that there's this moment of tangency. And at the moment of tangency, I'm going through a saddle node bifurcation. And on the other side of it, I have two additional fixed points that are born. So the stability didn't change over here. This is still stable. And because of that, I can surmise that my fixed points are stable, unstable, stable. I've actually entered a bistability regime where there's two different possible stable populations, one associated with a low value and the other associated with a higher value of the population. If I keep changing parameters, I can go through another saddle node bifurcation. So I can either go through a saddle node bifurcation via a tangency that happens up here, or I can go through a saddle node bifurcation via a tangency that happens down here. So either I have a single population that's um, stable and larger, I have a single population that's stable and smaller, or I have bi-stability, and whether I have a large population or a small population depends on the history of my population. And I might be interested in where in my parameter space, this RK parameter space, because I have two parameters right now, where I have bi-stability. It might be worth just kind of plotting that bi-stability region. And the way we do that is with something called a stability diagram. So a stability diagram is a plot in RK space. And the diagram shows us where the saddle node bifurcations occur. Because on one side of the saddle node bifurcations, I have one fixed point. And on the other side of the saddle node bifurcation, I have three. So here I'm in the three, and here I'm in the one. So if I plot the curves in RK space where the bifurcations occur, I can label different zones in the space that might have one fixed point or one stable fixed point or two stable fixed points. So I'm going to define these two um, functions. And fixed points happen when these are equal to each other, they're intersections. But bifurcations happen not just in an intersection, but when the two curves are tangent. And so I'm just going to set up that condition. I want a fixed point, but I want a fixed point that also is associated with a tangency. So I want the slope of this first curve to be equal to the slope of the second curve at my fixed point. And I find um, R and K um, 
in terms of x to make these curves. Um, and so I'm going to plot in our k space what these curves look like. Here they are. Here's the curve of saddle node bifurcations in our k space. This information isn't that easy to deter understand yet, but we know that these, uh, these saddle node bifurcations are separating regions where we have one fixed point from regions where we have three fixed points and two of them are stable. When I say one fixed point, I mean one fixed point with positive population. We do always have that zero population fixed point that I'm ignoring as I think about this analysis. And so what I've done here, it's a little bit small, but what I've done here is I've taken those intersection plots and I've superimposed them on the stability diagram so that we can see what's going on. So when we're up in this zone, this is a zone where we have one intersection and it's at a larger value of x. So we have a one stable fixed point at a larger population. Then we cross the saddle node bifurcation curve, and this is a different saddle node bifurcation curve. Up here, that curve is associated with passing through this saddle node bifurcation, and this curve down here is associated with passing through that one. In between these two curves, this is our region of bistability. And then once we pass through here, this is the region where we would have a low stable population. So in the stability diagram, we can separate the regions into the, a bi-stable region, a high stable population region, and a low stable population region. And this can be a useful way to understand the possibility space of what can happen in our system as a function of two parameters rather than just one which is what, what we were used to working with with a bifurcation diagram. So a stability diagram is showing bifurcation curves, but allowing us to think about two parameters at once.